Hi year 11. Surprise, surprise, we're starting off with another retrieval roulette. I promise it's worth it if you're doing these properly. I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise. Okay, so here's your questions. Pause and um, get those answered for me, please. Right? Okay, so here are your answers. So again, pause and get those marked and corrected for me, please. Thank you very much. Right, let's look at page 193 and this friction and road safety thing, okay? Now, the way I want you to do this is I want you to give this a go yourself, but I am going to go through it in this same video, okay? Um, so pause, work through this as best as you can, and then replay the video to... Um, Get the answers and correct anything okay there is a bit where you have to plot a graph um i did give you a bunch of graph paper like before christmas but th that's maybe run out so if you don't have graph paper then if you just do a wee sketch of the graph on normal paper that'll do okay so pause give this a go then replay the video um and i'm gonna go over it okay right so let's have a wee look in here. We've got information here in this table from the highway code. It's for a car in good condition on dry road with an alert driver. So if we look at the columns here, we've got um, different speeds of the car. We've got the thinking distance for this speed, the braking distance, and then the overall stopping distance. So the first question here is asking what is meant by thinking distance? Well, it's a distance right but it's the distance that your car is going to travel in the time that it takes you to like process the information that's ahead of you so the way i have worded that is the thinking distance is the distance the car travels in the time it takes the driver to react where people normally go wrong in this is that they forget to mention the fact that it's a distance they'll quite often say it's just the time taken to react but that would be like the reaction time or the thinking time not the thinking distance so either correct yours mark it right or write this down for the first time if you haven't given it a go yet okay okay now question two from the table calculate the reaction time of this driver so obviously this table doesn't have all the information um in it but if we look for a speed of 10 meters per second we know that in the time it took this driver to react they traveled seven meters so we've got enough information there that we could figure out the reaction time so see if i look on down here i've used that to, to calculate it i've said for a speed of 10 the distance is seven what's the time i've used my speed equals distance over time equation rearranged it to make time be the subject distance of seven and speed is 10 and we get 0 0.7 seconds now that value is a constant for this person the reaction time is generally a constant um but it's the the thinking distance or the reaction distance that would be um different depending on what speed because obviously if you're going much faster in that 0 0.7 seconds you're going to have traveled much further so if you had done this and you hadn't used this one um, say you'd use this 20 meters per second and the 14 you're still going to get the same answer they're the only two we could have used wasn't it yeah okay so there's question two 0 0.7 seconds hopefully that makes sense um i should have said at the start this page often does cause confusion whenever um, we try to do it individually and generally and um, this is something that in class i would end up or sorry we would end up all working through it together do you know what i mean not not that i would be a control freak but because i'm a bit of a control freak okay so if you've done it and you've got it wrong make sure you're fixing it if you haven't given it a go yet um even though i asked you to and um, do make sure that you're you're writing these solutions down because i am going to be asking to see this okay Right, question three, how would this be affected if the driver was it was tired? So that's talking about their reaction time. How's that reaction time going to be affected if they're, they're tired? So if you're tired, you're going to take longer to react. So I've just said there, the reaction time would increase if the driver, if you can even read that, is tired. Okay, uh, what else is going to affect his reaction time? So 
sometimes people put in here like the conditions of the the road that's not going to affect the reaction time that's going to affect like um the the braking distance and things like that but it's not going to affect the reaction time things that would affect your reaction time would be if you drink any al alcohol or taken any drugs or your age um and do you know what different people have different reaction times um yeah so things like that there, there's others that i won't have put there um but they would be alcohol and drugs would be the big one which is obviously why there's so many rules around it right where am i now number five yeah so calculate the thinking distance at a speed of 15 meters per second and then add it to the table so let's look here there's the speed of 15 meters per second it's asking us to get this thinking distance well we have the speed now we know his reaction time so we can calculate the distance so i'll show you that okay so here try not to show you all my answers at once um, i've just used distance of speed times time the speed they've asked us to do was 15 and we now know his reaction time which is constant is 0 0.7 so if we do that we get 10.5 meters so I've got that filled into my table there. Okay, right, let's look. Question six, what is meant by breaking distance? So breaking distance is gonna be the distance that you travel from the instant you apply your brakes until you stop. Let's see how I worded that. So breaking distance is the, oh, flip me, almost identically. Breaking distance is the distance the car travels from the moment the brakes are applied until the car stops. Okay, so get that down if you did not get that one. Then number seven, how would it change if the road was wet? So obviously the conditions of the road are going to affect the, the braking distances. So it, whenever the road is wet, your braking distance is going to increase. So you need to be um, just super careful that you apply your brakes earlier. So braking distance increases when the road is wet. It's because friction is reduced, right? Where am I? Number eight. What other factors affect the braking distance? So it's going to be other conditions of the road and conditions of the car. So I've said for that one, if it's icy, if there's oil on the road, if your tires are worn down, if they don't have proper grip, these are all things which are going to reduce the friction between the, the tire and the road. So anything that is going to reduce the friction there is um, going to increase that braking distance. Right, number nine, looking down the column braking distance. Oh, I read that wrong. Uh, what pattern can you see? What happens to the braking distance if the speed is doubled? So if we look here, right, whenever we have doubled, oh, you can't see it, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, so if our speed has doubled, it's gone from five to 10, our braking distance has multiplied by four, right? Let's see whenever we triple our braking distance. 5 to 15, it's multiplied by 9. I feel like we've talked about something like this before, I remember. We were in Mr. Ross's room. don't know why memories remember like that. Uh, but yeah, I do remember talking about this. Must have been whenever we were doing energy. It was. Do you, do you remember the questions with the guy diving off the diving board? We talked about this in there, right? It's the same idea. Let's see if there are other doubles. So here is 15 to 30 has doubled and this has been multiplied by four. Yeah, yeah, right. Now, here's my working out to show what's going on there. I haven't really written a very good answer for this, if I'm honest, but whenever the speed doubles, the amount of energy involved is going to have quadrupled, right? And it's because of the kinetic energy equation being a half mv squared. Right, I'll show you this here. So kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So that means kinetic energy is directly proportional to the speed squared because a half is a constant and mass is a constant. So if we double the speed, then it's the kinetic energy is going to go up by two squared, which is four. If we were to triple the speed, it's going to go up by three squared, which is nine. And then because this question is asking about breaking distance, um, because remember energy transferred is equal to work done. So let me actually write that on here. So um, kinetic energy 
sorry, change in, I should say. So the change in kinetic energy is equal to the work done, which is equal to force times distance. So if your kinetic energy has gone up by a factor of four um, and you're applying the same force, then your distance is gonna, gonna have gone up by a factor of four, okay? Um, don't worry too much about the explanation of that. Um, it's very unlikely that they will ask you that in an exam, but it is, it's really nice. I like to see like the mildly reasons behind things, okay? So hopefully this has, um, made some sort of sense to you okay it's because the speed has doubled in the equation which means this goes up by a factor of two because doubled means multiplied by two it's gone up by two squared which is four okay this circle will just have been me emphasizing that point in a class so you don't have to circle yours right where are we now number 10 complete the rest of the table so for that we're going to do this the same way. In fact, you know what? I'm going to write this on here. So to get the thinking distance, you're going to use distance equals speed times time. And it's going to be the speed and the time is the thinking speed or the reaction time. So it was 0 0.7, wasn't it? So if you haven't already done that, pause, fill those in for me now. Okay, so you should get there 3.5 and 17.5. Okay, breaking distances are all filled in. The overall stopping distance is just gonna be these two added together. So the thinking distance plus the breaking distance, and you can see that there from those. So if I fill the rest of those in, we've got 5.5, 28.5, and 67.5. Okay. Now, number 11 on graph paper, if you have it. Plot a graph of thinking distance against speed. Draw the line of best fit and label it so if you don't have graph paper just um just do a wee sketch okay as best as you can so thinking distance against speed i will show you my graph here so ignore that curve for now that's going to be the next bit but we've got distance on our y-axis and speed on our x-axis and plotting those um points we get a nice straight line and that's because that time is constant that reaction time is constant for the person so the the distance is basically going to be directly proportional to the speed okay so that should look like that at the once i go through this i'll zoom out and show you the um the whole thing all at once 12 on the same axis plot a graph of breaking distance against speed draw the line of best fit and label it so let me get this so you can see more I can't, I can't even get it to show you the whole thing, but this curve is breaking distance against speed. So um, the fact that it is a curve is what I is because of what I was going on about there with the, um, the speed being squared in the kinetic energy equation. And then that meaning that if the, the speed is doubled, the, the breaking distance is gonna go up by a factor of four. If speed is tripled, the breaking distance is gonna go up by a factor of three squared, which is nine. If the speed is quadrupled, the breaking distance is going to go up by a factor of 16 because that is four squared. Okay, but that is what your graphs should look like there. Okay, now question 13. A car travels at 27 meters per second. Use your graph to find all of these things. So if I go to my graph, I've gone to 27 and I have gone up until it's hit my thinking distance graph. I've gone up until it's hit my breaking distance graph and I've read off those values. Okay, so I think I actually have my answers over here. Yeah, so 13A is asking for the thinking distance. So again, that was going to 27, going up until it hit the thinking distance graph, going across and reading off that value. So I got one, I'm sorry, 19 meters. So see with ones like this, well, with the straight line graph, we should all be very fairly similar but if you're doing a sketch of your graph as opposed to doing it on proper graph paper don't be worrying if yours is off okay but it should be roughly that b then was the breaking distance so i've gone to 27 i've gone up and i have gone to my breaking distance graph read across this is where we're likely to have a, a good variety in our answers so the breaking distance if is 57.5 meters for my graph yours may be different okay 
Um, so judge for yourself, right? Then part C is the total stopping distance. So I've just added those two values together. So again, yours is probably going to be different, but um, yeah, as long as you've added them together, you get like error carried forward marks for that. Right, what's next? Okay, so on 14, um, on the same axis sketch and label, I haven't actually done it because I think it's going to get too messy, but um, I'm going to write what it would look like here. So the thinking distances, if the driver has drunk alcohol, well, their reaction time is going to be greater. So if we look back to that calculation that we did there, here, so for every speed, if your reaction time is bigger, then your thinking distance is going to be much higher. So it is likely to be a similar line to that, but much steeper. So I will write that in here. Okay, so a steeper line. And then B, the braking distances if the tires are worn. So tires are worn, you're reducing the friction. The car is going to take much longer to stop. So if we look back to our braking distance, which was the curve, it's going to be a much like a, a steeper curve. Can't think of a better way to word that. Oh, actually, maybe a higher curve is actually a better. I can't even spell. Hold on, let me fix that. Okay, I think that is actually a better way to say like it we could be the same shape of curve, but um, like just shifted up a bit. Okay, 15, when the driver brakes, the car's kinetic energy is not lost. Remember, energy cannot be created or destroyed, only change from one form to another. So what happens to it is going to get transferred into heat. So it's going to heat up the tires, it's going to heat up the uh, brake pads, the brake disc, the road a little bit. So it's transferred to heat. I'll write that in now. And maybe a wee bit of sound, so it's transferred to heat energy. Sometimes if you get out of your car after, like say you've arrived home and you've gone down a big hill or something, sometimes whenever you get out of the car you can nearly smell the brakes. That's because they've heated up so much. So it's transferred to heat energy and a little bit of sound as well as that. Now, if you have done that properly and you have given the stuff a go yourself before just getting my answers, and if you have paused to copy down all the proper solutions and everything that is going to take you most of the period plus the retrieval roulette so i'm reluctant to go on and start wait today i reckon i will leave that and um we'll do the wait equation next lesson okay so what i need you to send me is your page 193 filled in and I want you to show me your answers to these questions. Now, please, please, please do not try and squash your answers in on this page. It'll be a nightmare. Either um, if you have graph paper, you can answer it like me, do your graph on one side and then have your other answers on the other side. Or um, if you just have it done in your workbook. OK, so I'm going to be asking to see your page 193 your, and your answers to all of these questions. The reason I'm asking for this is just to make sure that you fill in this wee table and everything. Okay, I think that's me then. I will see you next lesson. Bye.